Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I know that it's been quite busy, of course, with all of the uh, holidays that have been happening and getting everything put together. So uh, let's see here. I want to make sure that folks have been able to join. It looks like we're waiting on a couple of innkeepers here. Okay, perfect. So it looks like you're able to hear me, which is great. So I'm going to go in and run a couple of polls before we get started, just to get a sense of who we have on the call with us today. So the first one is to find out if you have been a member of B&B Finder, or if you're currently a member, and um, or if you were a member previously and uh, dropped off of uh, the site. So if you could take just a minute to answer that, that would be great. And part of it is I'm really interested to know just from a perspective of, you know, if you have been a customer of BNB Finder in the past, what really um, experience did you have? You may have seen a lot of changes over the years. And I just want to make sure that I cover all of that uh, for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. And I've got another poll that I'm going to launch. And this is to find out if you have Google Analytics set up on your site. And if you do, great. Um, a lot of properties have it and they don't know how to use it. So if you could go ahead and take a minute to answer that, that would be great as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. So as we go through today, I'm really going to be sharing and giving you a sense of what's been happening, you know, in the industry just as a whole and what you can expect coming down the pipeline. So hopefully you're able to see my screen. Okay, perfect. Looks like we do. And a couple of things before I get started as well that I wanted to run through is that there is a chat, um, a questions box that's there on your screen. So everyone is on mute. If you have any questions, feel free just to put them in through that questions box and I'll be answering them uh, at the end if we have time for Q&A. And uh, you will also be getting a recording of today's session that will come through uh, via email after we're finished here today. So we're gonna talk at a high level of um, what's been happening in the industry. I know sometimes it's hard to you know, absorb everything. So I've also attached a PDF to the screen here. So you have a copy of the presentation that I'm doing today. So you can always download that and you can keep it um, for yourself if you wanna go back and reference it at any time. So. Um, my name is Janice Hurley, and I've been in the B&B industry since 2002, back when I started with BedandBreakfast.com. Uh, my background was in business hospitality management, and I had the pleasure of going and running the Inn at the Round Barn Farm in 2012, and I was there for two years while I ran the Inn, and I was there specifically to help the Inn sell. And I really thought that I understood what all of you go through on a daily basis, but I had no idea until I actually did it myself. And I have so much more respect for innkeepers and all that you do to create the experience for the travelers now and your guests now that I was at the, the round barn and, and went through that. So I've seen a lot of things over the years and I've watched our travel industry really evolve over over time. And I think what's interesting is I get asked all the time, you know, well, could you, you know, what, what did you think about what happened over time? And the truth is, I, I don't think I could have ever, you know, predicted exactly where we would be as of, you know, today, if you asked me 10 years ago. And, you know, when we first started in the directory business was back in 1993. And the question was, you know, why do I need a website? I've got an 800 number. And innkeepers weren't even open to listing on directories because they didn't want internet geeks staying at their properties. And, you know, we back then, the only reviews that came in were from guidebooks. Uh, Sandy Soul, who is actually my mentor, wrote the first B&B guidebooks. 
and that's actually how the first online directory uh, started, as well as folks like Bernice Chesler that have been in the industry. And I put this in here because I just think it's so funny when I think back to those days and where we were at, and the fact that you know MySpace was actually a thing. And the fact is that over time in the evolution of travel, really, you know, MySpace has transported into their space and sites like Booking.com and Expedia, who I previously worked for, a lot of the OTAs, they've really come in um, and become an important part of what we offer in the travel industry as ways for inns and B&Bs to get bookings. And what's happened, of course, over time is that a lot of innkeepers and a lot of the feedback that we've gotten is that innkeepers have felt like they've lost that connection to their traveler and that they don't have that personal um, way to connect with them. So when we look at, I'm just gonna forward my slide here, no matter how far we've come, this is something that I think is always gonna be a challenge for us. And this is really, when I look at my career over time and being part of the B&B industry, this is one of the things that I'm most passionate about, is making sure that we maintain our identity for who we are as our part of the travel industry and our part of the lodging experience. And a friend of mine recently was in California and called me, he was on tour and he said, you know, oh, I'm staying at this amazing hotel and it's so great and you wouldn't believe it, I've got a tub outside and it's beautiful. And I said, oh, where are you staying? And he said, oh, I'm staying at the McCallum house. And I laughed because I, I know the McCallum house is not a hotel, it's a B&B that I had worked with for years. And I said to him, you know, no, you're actually staying at a B&B. And he's like, no, I've never stayed at a bed and breakfast. I, I only stay, you know, at hotels. And I said, no, well, welcome to your first B&B experience. And it's things like that that keep my fire burning because we have a place and a very important place in the travel sector. And we need to be able to share what our experience is with travelers and help to start to clear up some of those misconceptions. And over time, of course, there have been a lot of changes specifically around short-term rentals coming into the conversation. And, you know, there's a lot of things that over time Airbnb has done for the B&B industry that the way that I view it, they've done some favors for us. You know, one of the things is when they initially started, you know, they talked about the host and the experience of the host, but really hosts had been uh, non-existent for the most part in the beginning. And over time, the way that I've, I've seen things evolve is that they're really grooming a lot of these hosts as innkeepers and they're adding in experiences. Well, that's what all of us do on a daily basis. You're the personal concierge for your guests automatically, but you know they're talking about it. And so what's happened is that's also provided some confusion because you can have just a checkbox when you sign up and become a bed and breakfast. And that checkbox had gone away for a long time. And then it came back just recently over the last few months. So uh, when I was at the Texas b, b Association meeting, just for fun, I'm based in Austin, Texas, I pulled up this uh, search, search by bed and breakfast. This was one of the first uh, results on the page, room to crash your head, private room and a bed and breakfast. And I could not make this up. This is actually the photos from the listing. And I had to laugh because I thought, you know, what year is this? These are the types of images that we would show when we first started to talk about, you know, it's the mattress on the floor kind of thing. The fact that there's a, you know, a ceiling fan with no light bulbs in it. And it got better as I continued to dig into it. And this is an actual listing that was showing as a bed and breakfast again with this uh, gentleman who's offering to be a car and driver for errands. Uh, turns out on his listing, he also had this photo posted of Frank the car guy. So, you know, you think about travelers that are out there searching for a true B&B experience and how complicated it's become to really be able to find a site that 
is supporting the true professional bed and breakfast experience. And that used to be, you know, uh, b and B Finder has been around for 20 years and was started by Mary White, who is a dear friend of mine. And it, she did an incredible job. It was at the same time bed and breakfast.com was in its heyday. And over time, of course, uh, b and um, bed and breakfast.com had been acquired by Expedia and is now really um, a feeder site for properties. So b bs that want to be listed can go to Expedia Direct and be fed over. But the fact is, is that a traveler going to bedandbreakfast.com, when they go in and they do a search, they see b bs they see vacation rentals, they see hotels. And it's not just about the bed and breakfast experience any longer. So when we thought about coming in and acquiring b and Finder, that was a big catalyst for us was that we recognized that for b and bs they didn't have a place that they could go to and b and b finder was really the last site that was left specifically that you know could provide that direct booking to the property so we also saw the opportunity because there is a book direct movement that has started to happen and this has been going on for years in the hotel industry because the hotel industry has big enough marketing dollars that they can run campaigns on tv and say book direct with hilton or book direct and i'm sure you've seen these commercials but as all of you and smaller bnbs you just don't have the marketing dollars to be able to do that so it's crucial at this stage in our travel evolution that we come together as an industry so that we do have that voice that's going to be loud enough and big enough to be able to reach out to travelers and say we're here and this is why booking direct with a bnb is important and uh, through some of the changes that have happened such as um, the google placement and how that's changed you might have noticed when you're searching on google now for a bnb and you are in a particular destination there is the whole um, book a room button that's listed there on the local listing well 70 percent of travelers think that google's book a room button goes directly to the hotel or to the inn and the fact is it doesn't all the time right so it might go direct to a landing page that's not your hotel and then they're booking through an OTA and they don't realize it. So I'm gonna run through at a high level because I think it's always a good reminder. All of you know why you want book direct bookings. You know, the first thing is, well, I don't wanna pay the commission. And of course that makes sense. But there's a lot of other reasons why, and it's important to remember this. Of course, owning the relationship with your travelers, being able to send a pre-stay message, be getting that confirmation that they're, they're email address, their phone number, collecting all the information that you need to know as an in owner to be able to communicate, these are my check-ins, because we know people don't read when they're booking, and anything that they need to know. Um, of course, being able to create brand loyalty and guest loyalty, and being able to remarket back to those guests. You can't do that when they're booking through a site where you don't have their contact information. Um, also, you know, someone who books with your b, &B is far more active um, choice than an OTA booker. They're more likely to be from your targeted market um, and connecting with the values of your property. And of course, you know, the more data that you have on the, the guest, the more personalized you can make their experience. And of course, there's the commission. So increasing the b, &B direct bookings uh, with unique offerings is crucial. I loved this statement when I read it. In a world dominated by big brands and businesses, when standardization is the path to efficiency, customers consistently look for something out of the norm. And who are we? You know, we're the ones who provide that unique experience that nobody else in the lodging industry can touch. They try, but they can't. So it's important that we understand who our audience is. And for example, Marriott, who's again, has a lot of money for marketing, went out and they expect the majority of their guests to be millennials. So they've directed their um, company's direct bookings marketing campaigns on the emphasis of the experience in the joy of staying because they know that that resonates with millennials. Um, also providing incentives for guests to book direct with you. 
So you'll see a lot of times these larger chains have things like, um, you know, incentive programs where, you know, you become a VIP or you have a certain level and you can get things like a late checkout or you can get a free upgrade. I'm not saying go in and create a whole type of, you know, incentive program, but it's things to think about to offer to your guests who book direct with you and who are returning guests and ways to maintain that. Also, you know, using your authenticity, you know, B&Bs always have a, most, a much closer relationship with their local area. And um, a great idea that an innkeeper gave me a few years ago was he had just purchased an inn in Virginia. And he said, Janice, I just wanted to go out and get to know my local merchants. They had a lot of wineries in the area and a lot of distilleries. So he went out and introduced himself as the new owner of this particular inn. Now, whether you've owned your inn for 10 years or five years or you just bought it, you could do the same thing. And what I thought was really smart about what he did was he went out, introduced himself, but he said, if it's okay for you, I'd like to include you on a VIP card that I'm gonna be giving to my guests who book direct with me. And you don't have to commit to anything, but if you are okay with it, I'm gonna put your logo on there and they'll know that they can come and visit you and whatever it is for that day that you wanna give them, if, as long as you give them something special, that would be great. So he got all of this buy-in from these local merchants and he created the cards on Vistaprint, which cost him almost nothing. And when the travelers who came and booked direct, and he even ran a campaign with this, that if you book direct, you'll get a VIP local card. And then he gave that to the guests upon arrival. They feel special and it's sent advice them to book direct. And then, you know, of course, it made everybody in the community happy as well. So I loved that idea and wanted to share it. Also, um, it, engaging with your travelers through content. You know, having video on your site, I have said it a million times in my career and I'll continue to say it, high res images, people, you know, the three rules of marketing, people don't read, people don't read, people don't read. So you need to have great photos. And that's what we've driven B&B Finder with. And when I show you the listings, you'll get a sense of why that's so important and why we decided to design our new site with that, um, with the image being the most important piece. So something else to think about with direct bookings that's incredibly important is uh, there was a recent uh, T News um, that did a uh, survey. And what they found was 15% of guests purchase extras at the time of booking. So in your booking engine, you know, B&B Finder is going to do their job of sending traffic to your website. And then it's your website's job to convert that reservation. Now, certainly they'll contact you direct from our site. They might give you a call or they might email you because they have questions before. But if they're going directly to your, to your website, which they have many links that they can do that from, from our site, you want to make sure that your booking engine has what it needs to be able to convert that reservation. And also that you have the ability to make more money for that booking. So having the ability to include packages, add-ons in that booking engine is crucial because if we know that 15% of the guests who are going to book through your booking engine are going to purchase extras, that's additional revenue for you. Guests who book one to seven days in advance are three times more likely to add on, seven to 21 days, five times more likely. So the guests that are looking out at a longer period of time are looking to add more of those purchases. Couples that come, um, purchase extras that are available at your inn, like roses or champagne or whatever it might be. And when groups travel, they're looking to purchase outside extras. So thinking about offering some kind of experience, local experience, whether it be um, a tour of a local winery or something like that. So I always just like to provide just some ideas to get you thinking about ways to generate additional revenue. So we know that a lack of unpublished reviews and lack of photos are two of the reasons why um, guests aren't going to convert into bookings. So making sure that your website does have up-to-date reviews and current photos. We have data from TripAdvisor that suggests that 
B&Bs that have at least one photo saw a 138% increase in the travel engagement that they had on their sites. On top of that, with one photo, they are 225% more likely to receive a booking inquiry. So that's huge. So if you think about that, and that's based off of one photo, you can only imagine if you had multiple photos that really were selling the experience on your property. We've got a lot of great photographers in our industry. And if there was something that you haven't invested in and you were thinking, you know, what makes the most sense right now? I definitely would say get those photos, get them updated. Um, problem areas uh, that occur um, and why guests don't convert. Um, there's few options for direct booking sites. Um, that's where we enter the picture. Um, of course, the reliance on OTAs. So, you know, those larger travel sites competing with them, the cost of acquisition, marketing, all of those things that we discussed. So, one thing I wanted to mention, because I think it's something that we also don't think about as an industry often enough, is how we combat abandoned bookings. So what that means is when the travelers, you know, we're driving the traffic to your site. And as I mentioned before, if your site isn't doing its job and converting. So when you look at the traffic that comes from a directory that provides you a direct link, you should expect that to see around a 2% one and a half to 2% conversion from that traffic that's coming from the site. And that's what should convert into a reservation. So if they aren't conversion, converting into reservations, reasons why, uh, they want to do more research. Um, you know, of course, they want to compare pricing, things like that. But I think the key and why I highlighted it is the process was too complicated. So if you take away any homework from today outside of joining the site, you want to pick up your phone and you want to try to make a reservation on your website on your booking engine. And the reason why I say on your phone is because we know that the highest percentage of traffic um, does come through mobile. Now, what an interesting statistic is, is that you will get a higher amount of traffic on your mobile site then you will get bookings. A lot of times travelers are doing the research when they're on the go, and then they might book later when they're at home, but it's essential to look at what does my booking engine look like on a mobile device as well as on my computer. And please do that because every time I'm at a conference, I sit down with innkeepers, I do it, and I can't tell you how many times they're like, oh, that's what, that's the, what the booking engine looks like? Oh, that price is wrong or this is it. So take a minute and, and just go through that process. Um, also, guests may leave for other reasons. Of course, everybody is always looking for a deal or always looking for a discount. That's why one of our biggest initiatives at B&B Finder is we're focusing on the value of staying at bed and breakfast. So a lot of the content that we're creating, the blog posts that we're putting out there, is about that value of staying. We don't have to discount. Of course, there are times when it's appropriate, but we have to be... Um, better at sharing with guests what is included in that B&B stay and everything that you get with that cost because you are competing against other folks in the area and um, you know some of those rates are so much lower but they don't understand what they're getting in that and I think a great example is when I was recently in New Orleans and I love talking to any of the cab drivers that I hop in with. And I said, you know, I'm always trying to get a pulse on what's happening. And one of them had told me about a guest who had just gotten out of their cab and they were furious. They were on their way to the airport. And he was like, well, what's the matter? And they said, well, we booked this hotel and the rate was, you know, $89. And we thought we were getting a deal. And then we get there and there's a $25 per night res resort fee. It was $40 per night for parking, then we had to pay for breakfast. So as an industry, we still have and always have had a great opportunity to sell that value and talk about that value. So what can you do to stop and help abandon booking or, or stop abandoned bookings from happening? Uh, make the booking process a two-step process. Um, I would refer to your booking engine provider, whoever that might be, on what they recommend. They can see the conversion for their booking engines and they can make recommendations there. 
I put the mobile responsive website on here because there's still a lot of properties who don't have a mobile responsive site. Um, with the launch of the new BNB Finder website that just launched in the middle of October, we launched it and um, we are constantly adding new features to it. And our whole mobile push is something that we are working on heavily uh, starting uh, now through the next several months and making sure that that's the best experience. So just log on, make sure that your site is mobile responsive for um, your website and especially make sure that your booking engine is mobile responsive. Um, make sure that guests can book in a secure way. Of course, you wanna make sure that your booking engine is PCI compliant. I already talked about testing that booking experience and things to do to attract them to your property. So let's shift the focus to the tools, i.e. B&B Finder, that are gonna help drive those direct bookings. So when we acquired the business, of course, you know, we wanted to make sure that we learned from what we've experienced in the past. And we wanted to make sure that we made commitments to all of you and to the industry of how we were going to drive B&B Finder. And what's crucial is we knew that we needed to build a team of industry experts that um, truly understand your needs. You know, when I first started, you know, 18 years ago, whatever it is now, back at betterbreakfast.com, I remember innkeepers would always say, you know, what do you know? You know, you've never been an innkeeper. And that's why I took that challenge and did become one in 2012. But, you know, it's, it's, Crucial, you don't have time to waste talking to someone who doesn't understand your business. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the team here in a little bit. We also chose to make a decision to heavily invest in rebuilding the website. You know, when we inherited it in the acquisition in April, you know, Mary did an incredible job at, you know, keeping the site going with the resources that she did. Um, she had to make some decisions and she had to move her site to a server and, uh, Lisa Kolb from Acorn Internet Marketing stepped in and really saved the day. You know, she came in, she rebuilt the site and she kept it going on WordPress, which was great because, you know, for all, everyone that was customers, you know, they still had the site. When we came in, we said, we're going to create a best in class website. So that's why we chose to build from the ground up a brand new website and put in all of the experience that we've had over the years. Um, also, creating a new gift card, uh, gift certificate interface. So we just launched um, last week, actually, a way for travelers to purchase either a branded e-cert where they can upload their own photo or they can choose um, a special header. And we just added in plastic cards that we will mail out to the travelers. And that um, program, which Mary started years ago, um, is still the same commission. It's still 15% only on the cost of the gift card. So if you have a $150 gift card and the guest comes and stays and their bill's $300, you're only paying that 15% on that $150. We also implemented some criteria for the guests. So they can't use more than two gift cards in one stay. And um, there's some other things that are really important because we wanted to make sure that innkeepers understood that we don't want this to ever become a discount card. And those are the, some of the things that we learned from years past. You know, we will never sell our gift cards in big box stores. We, you will never see a B&B Finder card in a Costco or in a Walmart, um, especially the Costco, because, you know, those cards at betterbreakfast.com were previously sold that way. We made that decision as a branding decision but what we found out and what we got back from the innkeepers is that it became a discount card and that's not what it was designed for. The gift card program is designed to bring you new travelers. And as we're seeing our holiday sales come in of the gift cards, you know, we see that, you know, that they're buying them as gifts for other people to go in and have that experience. So, and that's exactly what it was designed to do. Um, also committed, of course, to everything that I just talked about in driving the direct booking to you. We are not going to become an online travel agent. We are going to always continue and commit to bringing you that direct booking. So when I talked about the team for a little bit um, and I have worked with Eric Goldreyer, I worked with him for about 12 years. 
um, back at bedandbreakfast.com when I started in 2002. And uh, he's the one that I went to and said, you know, we've got to do this for the industry because there is nobody else that has the experience that we do that is going to be able to bring back the direct bookings that properties are now lacking. And Eric is extremely passionate about the B&B industry, um, after, so much so that after he sold BedandBreakfast.com, he actually went and bought it in just south of Austin called Sage Hill and has been running that b and um, for years. Um, he, of course, has you know folks that are there and he's involved in so many different things. But um, of course, myself uh, that's here as part of the team and uh, Sarah Schuster, who some of you uh, most likely remember from being at bedandbreakfast.com for years. Sarah also owns her own property up in Michigan and is running that as well. And Tim, well Tim Wilson, who has been in the industry for over 20 years, he was with us um, prior to B&B Finder. He was a senior consultant for Whitestone Marketing, and he has more knowledge about the industry um, from this side of it than just about anybody I know. And we brought Tim on uh, to manage our diamond collection because a lot of properties who had invested in the diamond collection previously, they uh, don't no longer have that option um, with betterbreakfast.com because the program no longer exists. And um, it's incredible at um, how quickly properties are it, coming in and adopting uh, the collection. So if that's something you're interested in, we can definitely have Tim reach out to you. Um, Tabitha, who's been with B&B Finder for years, um, 11 years, who's worked with Mary side by side as part of the team with our customer experience. We have Liz Hamilton, who's managing all of our social media and our SEO, who is actually the first uh, employee of BBCom. And uh, Marty Main has been helping us with some of our PR. So a lot, a lot of you who know Marty over the years. So let's take a quick tour of the new B&B Finder so I can give you some highlights of some things uh, that I wanna show you. So um, the site again is really driven towards imagery. So we wanna make it as clean of an experience as possible for travelers. And one of the things that we decided to do when we were designing it was we wanted to make it really clear for the traveler and for the innkeeper, you know, if you're purchasing a more expensive listing, if you're investing more, you, you should have more ad space on the page. So the way that we designed the membership levels, you can see here, platinum has a larger size than gold and silver. And the way that the search results work is that they go by membership level. So diamond at the top, then platinum, gold, and silver. And so you can choose based on the competition in your area, really what size and how much ad space that you want on the page. And what I love about this is that previously, um, on other sites, all the listings look exactly the same. And so you could be paying for one and you might get a few more photos or something like that, but it was never a difference in the size of ad space. So I think that's really cool. Um, this is an example of the Missouri State page showing our very first diamond collection, Garthwood Side Mansion, and then those gold listings that are underneath just to give you an idea of what that layout looks like. So one really, I mean, there's a lot of really cool things, but one thing that I was so excited about when we decided to redesign the site was that we had so much negative feedback about Second City listings over the years because the way that the site previously worked is that you would list and you had to pay a full membership rate to be listed in your primary city. And if you wanted to be listed in additional cities, you had to pay half the cost of your regular membership. So that became quite costly. So when you look at what you paid overall, um, it became really expensive really quickly for properties that were near other destinations where they wanted to get that exposure. That's not the case with B&B Finder. You pay a flat membership rate, and the way that our search pages work is that the guest, if they're searching Austin, they're gonna see the properties of, that are closest to Austin, uh, they're listed at the top, and then properties that are nearby are also listed, but they're listed uh, below those properties in the search. And what's great for you as, a, as an in-owner is that you're gonna show up in more searches 
but you're not paying for that additional exposure. So as we go on, some other things. So this is an example of the way that the B&B Finder listing used to look like. Um, there wasn't really, there, there were some photos, but there was really a lot of text. And if we know that people don't read, people don't read, we wanted to make sure that we were focused on the images. So if taking Blair House in as an example, um, when you're on the, when the listing for your property, the guests can click over, they can view all photos, which opens up into a nice gallery. Again, all of those, those links directly going to your website. We have a spotlight for the innkeepers. So we know that having you as part of the experience is crucial to the guests. So we want to be able to highlight you. So that's part of the listing. I did have an innkeeper recently who was like, I don't want to put my picture on my listing and I could not encourage them to do it. And I said, you know, this was at one of the B&B um, association meetings. And I said, well, you remember the association. What if we put the logo of your B&B association in place of your photo, and then we still talked about you as part of the experience and said, you know, Mary Jo and, and Tom have been members of the Texas B&B association since, you know, for 20 years and whatever. So there's ways that you can use that if you want to highlight the chef that you're in, if you're food driven, whatever you'd like, that's your space to do it with. So why join the site now? couple of things that we've got going on. Um, another one of the commitments that we made when we acquired the business was we wanted to ensure that we stand 100% behind our product. And previously, if you joined, you had 90 days. And if you weren't happy, then you could get a refund. Well, with the new B&B Finder, we have a 100% money back guarantee for that first year. So if in any reason, in the 11th month, if you haven't gotten the bookings you expected, you can get back 100% of what you paid for your membership. And I cannot stress that enough because it's us committing to you that we are going to drive the reservations. Being a brand new site, it's going to take some time to continue to increase those bookings, but there's no risk at joining. If you know at any time you're not happy, no questions asked, you can get that money that you've invested into B&B Finder, and we're going we're gonna to be able to credit that back to you. So I mentioned the money back guarantee, mentioned the direct bookings, the gift card program. One of the things um, that I want to talk about is the industry promotion, because this has also been a big gap that we've had in our industry, because we really haven't had that voice out there that's been loud enough to be able to reach those travelers to talk about the experience and to really push the promotion of our industry. So before I get into some of the initiatives that we're doing, I wanted to share some of the pricing. So we do have a promotion going on right now for properties who want to join at the annual level that you can join and get an additional three months added to your 12 month listing for free. So you'll get um, 15 months of a membership, but you're only paying for 12. And that's when you pay annually. We did want to make sure for properties that are, you know, looking into um, their slower season, depending on where you're located, we offer a monthly plan. So you can pay monthly as well, if that's what you'd like. You don't get the, the three months for free offer, um, but certainly, you know, you can do that. If you are a member of a state association um, or a national association, such as PI or AIHP, we reached out yesterday to all of the associations to partner with them. And so if you are a member of an association, you should be expecting an email to come from your association. Um, if you don't get one, definitely contact them um, to inquire because as an association member, you can get 25% off of your membership cost. And if you choose to pay annually, you still get that additional three months for free. And that goes through only the end of December. So you want to make sure that you're taking full advantage of that. Um, what's included in the different membership levels, you can find this on the site, but just wanted to give you a high level um, of what's included in each of those uh, membership categories. So 
I am going to share some of the um, programs that we've been running and some of the blog posts. So here are some examples um, of some different Instagram posts that we did. Everything that we're doing and everything that we're sharing on social media is focused on the in and focused on the experience that the guest has. And uh, we feature our uh, member ins on these posts. We also have done um, a lot of work on writing blogs because when we first launched, you can see that there's a blog here from 2017. There hadn't been one written. Uh, I think the last one was the one in August of uh, 2018. So we came in, we are writing blogs. They're twice a month. They get posted to the site and we're sharing out all those experiences. Here is an example of one that we wrote in August about Lakeside b &Bs. So for all of our members, we send out emails. This is an example of the November articles that we were writing. So as a member, you're gonna get an email every month asking if you would like to participate or if you would be a good fit for any upcoming topics that we're writing and also sharing other ways that we're reaching out. So we have, I myself have partnered with the Wheel of Fortune since 2006. So as a member of B&B Finder, if you have a video and you would like to participate and be featured on the Wheel of Fortune, that's a member benefit. All it costs if someone wins your prize is that you will commit to a six night, seven day stay for the winner. The best part is that they will have to provide four different weeks that they want to stay. So that means if they say, I want to stay July 4th week, Memorial Day week, and you know, whatever it is, and you say, actually, no, nope, I'm, I'm booked to, you know, that's my high season, they'll come back and give you four more weeks. So even though you're giving away that six night, seven day stay, you can make sure that it works for what it fits into your schedule. We are also committing to supporting all of our associations. And we understand that the ad advocacy work that they do for the industry is crucial. And so we are attending as many of the state conferences as we can and getting out there and being able to see all of you face to face. And also supporting the Book Direct movement. So this is a movement, if you're not familiar with it, we highly encourage you to um, to check it out. This is something that was started by um, Pi, AIHP, and has been driven by Acorn Internet Services. And this is a way for all of us to get involved in pushing the Book Direct movement and what it means to um, to the to, to the B and B industry. So I did have a couple of questions that came in that I wanted to cover. I'm also going to share with you, and you'll see this when it comes over um, in the email, uh, my direct contact information. So you know you can always shoot me an email direct uh, if you'd like. That's my direct number. You can always contact me as well. And if you want to have any questions answered, I mean it doesn't just have to be about B and B Finder. If it's just about the industry, whatever you'd like. I'm here for you. And so I had a question about, um, can you explain the association option? Is the cost for the association or an individual B&B within that association? So thank you for that question. Um, th the way that the promotion works is we reached out just yesterday to all of the presidents of the associations uh, sharing the offer with them. And we provided them with an email to send out to all of their members. So if you're members of multiple associations, you may get multiple emails about this offer. But what the offer is, is that you as a member of that association will be able to join B&B Finder and save 25% for the first year off the cost of your membership. So you can do that if you're paying monthly, if you're paying annually. If you choose to pay annually, you get the 25% and an additional three months for free. So the way that you sign up for that is that we provided a promo code to your association. So if you don't get that email, um, contact your association and ask them about that. And um, they can provide the email that we sent to them uh, to share with all their members that'll have that promo code that'll get you that 25% off. And again, that uh, promotion is going through December 31st. So um, 
if you don't hear from them, you know, certainly you can always reach out to me. I can connect with your association or you can contact them directly. So hopefully that answered uh, that question for you. And uh, it doesn't look like I've got, oh, perfect, it did, awesome. So doesn't look like I've got any other uh, questions that have come in. I want to thank you for all of your time today. I cannot tell you what a privilege and an honor it is to have been in this industry as long as I have. And I wouldn't have done it or still be in it and still be as passionate as I am today as I was in the beginning if it wasn't for all of you. So thank you for everything that you do to keep the industry going and for all that you do to share those experiences with your guests. So I hope you have a wonderful holiday and I cannot wait to be working with you all very soon. So have a great afternoon and we will talk soon.